Welcome, everybody, to the Kingdom and its Stories. We're delighted to have you with us today. Our guest today is Chuck McCracken, and uh, Chuck has a unique opportunity to witness to people who like cars, who like classic cars, and uh, and I'm one of those. And it was a part of a, a Youth for Christ uh, a car club when I was in high school back in Phoenix in the in the 50s a uh, long time ago chuck but uh, uh th this program is designed to interview people who can be an example of someone who is allowing jesus to use their lives their hands and their feet to be his witness in whatever profession they happen to be in and so chuck welcome we're glad to have you uh, on our program today. And why don't we begin by asking you to just give us an elevator speech of who is Chuck McCracken? And uh, so that the people who are listening know who they're listening to. Well, hello, Bob. So nice of you to have me here. Yeah, I um, I have kind <laughs> of a special uh, witness, so to speak. Um, I'm special. Now, as Christians, we're all special. <laughs> we're all special. But I'm in particular special and a servant of my Lord Jesus. And back in October of 72, in Mesa, I became born again. I was about mm. 21 and didn't really know anything about spiritual matters or who Jesus was, other than some swear words. But I uh, started attending a uh, American Baptist church uh, downtown uh, Mesa, which a lot of Mormons around, and uh, was... Uh, uh, given the option to come forward on one Sunday morning, I said, you know, this is not rocket science. Do I <laughs> want to go to heaven or do I want to go to hell? Well, oh, okay. in my immaturity, I said, hey, I think I'll go to heaven. But that night was planned for a Sunday uh, uh, night uh, baptismal. And so I had uh, some relatives and uh, family come over. And that night, a huge uh, storm ran through Mesa, downtown Mesa, and into uh, our area, hail and huge uh, wind shears knocking out windows and hail about like golf balls and knocked out uh, the power as I was in the back with my little sh shroud on getting ready to be baptized with the kids. But they got some uh, candles and, and they went on with that. So that's something I'll never, ever be able to forget. Well, and another well. special day was December of 51 when I was birthed. I was born in Phoenix, but I was an unwanted baby. But God knew, he knew what he had planned for me. And then the last special day is April of 52, where a couple decided to choose this baby. And that's how I became a McCracken. Wow. So I have three birthdays that I celebrate. <laughs> wow. So anyway, right now I've uh, been saved about 53 years. <laughs> I'm doing a uh, ministry now uh, under the banner of uh, Team RFC called Rotters for Christ. Uh, like you. In high school, I built my Chevys, raced them at the local drags, and had a lot of fun. And of course, went away from that as you go to college and get into your career and whatnot and family, which I did. And uh, now that I came back kind of to the hobby, I'm a Corvette guy. So I go to car events and I see these peers of mine, give or take 10 years. And I'm going, it's so sad. They just put their whole life into their car Right. To the chagrin of their wife, their kids, their friends, <laughs> they don't even think of spiritual matters. So as I now, over the last three years, have been going to upwards of 40 events a year, wow. indoors, outdoors, one day, three hours, uh, four days, uh, I'm there as the Lord's servant. And he knows the spirit brings these special people to me for me to have one-on-one -on -one chats and to influence them and or encourage them if they're already saved. It's just been a huge blessing. Chuck, what do you do, what do, you do for making a living? I'm retired, and okay. uh, I knew uh, as a Christian, we never retire. That's and so right. my wife and I uh, spent a lot of time at Bethany Bible Church over the decades, and we're really taught and got involved in all kinds of ministries, whether it's children's, adults, men's, choir, just all sorts of uh, missions and things and ministries with missionaries. So uh, it was just the next step. He's given me skills uh, like this great voice. You know, I sing with it, which is great praise. Uh, I can talk to people and uh, it's just, well, Lord, what's the next step? So 
there were some other things behind the scenes, but now I'm uh, brought to this to try and bring these people, mostly guys, awaken their spirit to somehow get them to see that, and they know, they know they're in their last days. And once you start talking to them heart to heart, and, and that's been a huge blessing. Most of these people are honest. They'll give me the truth at every question I ask. So it's just been great to be able to bring them forward, to bring them, to awaken their spirit, I pray, and to bring them salvation if it's all possible. But boy, this is a planting ministry. I, I'm an evangelist. I talk to people I don't know. People well, don't know me. Yeah. And I have that first underlying tie of the car hobby. Oh, we just all enjoy it and love it, whether <laughs> it's racing or car shows or making things. And then I turn the conversation and I start asking them questions like, oh, do you know God? Oh, do you have a church you go to? Oh, what's your yeah. family heritage? It's just been really an educational thing over the years to be able to talk in a short period of time. I, I don't have more than a minute or two to start a conversation, get in depth, and right. they're very honest with me. So it's just been a great blessing. So being retired doesn't mean you're retired from the kingdom of God. No, and, sir. Uh, actually, it sounds like uh, the retirement has given you more opportunity to do what you really love to do uh, than um, when when you were actually uh, working, uh, what we call a working guy. And uh, Well, I did that for 53 years, so I thought it was this time to, to move on to better things. Yes, better, much better. So tell, tell us some stories of, of, uh, that would help us to understand, you know, maybe how you witnessed to somebody and how God worked in their life. Sure, I I could spend the next ten hours, <laughs> but okay. I'll try. All right, well, it uh, down we to only few. have a half an hour, so <laughs> so share with share with us a few. Well, um, it, it's been real interesting. My first year, I uh, knew how to work with promoters, events, and go to these shows or things. And as people would come into my space, my uh, I'm usually a vendor. I, I, I pay to have a space. Some places don't want us. You know, they say, gee, we don't want politics or uh, religion, you know. But overall, people are very accepting. They see this ministry. They want the spiritual influence in their event. I've had so, events. So Chuck, let me, let me just interrupt. What is your space? Oh, I have a... Uh, space as any vendor you might have a 10 by 10 you might have a 10 by 20 uh it just all depends on the place and and how much money i can afford to spend but uh, i have to pay a fee and apply and have insurance and and our organization ha helps me with all of those things uh but i'm the first one to be doing this in like decades here in arizona and this is a car state but anyway i i see these people i can't go out and walk around I have to stay within my, in essence, contracted space. Okay, what, tell us what. What is that space? What's it called? Well, it's a vendor space. It's, it's just you you pay for this 10 by 10 space, and you can put a table, a tent. You can do anything you want for the time that the event is scheduled for. Okay. And a lot of times I'm outside. That's probably the majority. But I do have events like good guys and auctions and other things where I'm inside, which I, I like. Uh, so this space is something that I have to trust the Lord, and boy, the Spirit sure works good, brings people into my area so I can say, oh, good morning, or gee, that's a nice hat, or what type of car do you have? And I start a dialogue. So, for example, I had one man, I was at Good Guys Inside, and he and his son stopped by, and he looked up at my display, and uh, it, it really witnesses to anyone who wants to stand and read, uh, and he walks in, and we engage in conversation. He says, gee, this is great. I just can't believe we've got a witness here. These these guys and mm. gals need this witness. And we started talking. I said, well, where do you go to church? How long have you been a Christian? And had his son with him. Son looked like he was about maybe uh, 9 or 10. Yeah. And he started telling me about his son, that uh, he's very bright, and he's being teased by his peers. And I don't know why and I know this is the Holy Spirit, I turned to the son, shook his hand, said, good morning, how you doing? He said, fine. I said, you know, I know you're being teased. 
you're being put down by your peers, but I want you to know you have a God who's stronger than any criticism you would ever get. You know, don't don't let those things bother you. I know it does, but you have to live higher than that. And your dad will help you and when you go to church and go to your groups, dig deep into the Lord, read his word. And the little boy just seemed uh, on cloud nine to go away wow. and uh, uh, be able to be encouraged. And, and so I meet not just unsaved, and not just my target area, which is the car guys and gals, but I'm meeting the public. I, I hadn't thought about that. So I'm meeting families, I'm meeting ladies, I'm meeting guys, I'm meeting kids, teens. One time I had a teen come into one of my uh, displays. I think I was uh, uh, in uh, Awatuki at the time. And uh, he just, you know, looked like he was 19 or 20 and kind of quiet. And so I started asking him questions, get to open him up and say, hey, uh, how long you lived here? And, you know, where you go to school or what you're doing, what for living and whatnot, got him to open up. And I could tell this was an opportunity he would listen. And I said, mm. well, do you know who God is? And he says, well, yeah. And I says, well, do you go to a church? Well, not really. Now, we have a little booklet that's just a great little booklet for those who are unsaved or maybe a brand new Christian that helps them when they read it to know where to connect with a church, how to get a Bible, okay. you know, how that lays out the plan of salvation to confirm that, make sure they say the prayer. And so, you know, I said, I've got something special for you. And I reach over to my table and I grab it and I hand it to him and I fold it out. I said, here's a great booklet. I really beg you. Please read this. When you go home tonight, you pray to your God, our Jesus, that you want to be saved. You just want to not have to go to hell. You want to have a, an abundant life and, and be blessed with the relationship with our living Jesus. And I could tell he was listening. He was taking this in. Now, we got tons of hundreds of people walking around. I feel uneasy to ask him to pray with me right then and there. So right. I, I trust the spirit that that goes home. And, that, and and so I've had many, many opportunities to give the plan of salvation. And they, they hear it. You can just tell they're listening intently. But yeah. I, I meet all these other people. I had one guy uh, comes to me and uh, had, a, 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 I think, his wife with him. And uh, he says, well, this is great. Boy, that's your nice, you know. And I says, well, uh, what do you do? He says, well. I, I've just got a great uh, life. He says, I, I'm a trucker. And some years ago, I was on the job and I had a big load and it was not strong. And I, it was, I was in kind of a gravel area and I pulled over and I got out and I was going to be tightening this thing. And for some reason, I fell backwards on my back and a truck like mine, you know, big, heavy, eight, yeah. really rode right past and rode right over my body, his old chest area. Oh, my. Oh, my. I said, you're kidding. How are you alive? He says, well, because of the grace of Jesus, I had a lot of problems with lots of surgeries, lost my wife, lost my business, lost my rig. Uh, but after I recovered, I came to God. I came to Jesus, and he changed my life, and now I've been born again. I'm real alive. I've got another business. I've got a wonderful Christian wife. I've got a kid and I'm ministering to those around me. And you could tell he had an arm problem, you know, that wasn't yeah. real strong and kind of walked a little odd, but man, you know, there's a guy that should be dead. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I meet these people. It's just wonderful. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, we're listening. You're listening. And uh, <clears throat> I'm sort of participating in the listening uh, to the kingdom and its stories. And <clears throat> in this radio broadcast, we interview people who are allowing Jesus uh, to use them to be his hands and feet in, uh, in whatever they do. And today we're interviewing Chuck McCracken. And, you know, Chuck is a car guy. <clears throat> he loves classic cars. And he visits what well, you said about forty of these um, of these uh, groups a year, and um, and have an opportunity to to be Jesus' hands and feet to people who come to your space, um, <clears throat> or that you just happen to meet as you as you walk around. So 
uh, Chuck is sharing some of the ways that God is using him, giving him an opportunity to share Jesus Christ with people who come to these car shows. So, <clears throat> Chuck, we're delighted to have you with us today. Tell us, tell us some more stories of um, of of how God has enabled you uh, to be His witness in this um, in this car club. Uh, interests of folks who who love old classic cars yep rotters for christ uh it's a underpinning of team rsc.org you go there and see a lot of things there are 52 year old ministry nationwide there's almost 350 of us unpaid volunteers and uh, we just go to races and do many things i specialize in the rotters the hot rotters the hobbyists the collectors talking about collectors I'm a Corvette guy. You know, I had Chevys when I was a kid. And so for me, you know, Corvette's uh, the fun car to have. I've had a couple. And uh, I can tell sometimes these special Corvette guys. I remember I was walking in, in another uh, event, and I see this man with kind of a eh, conservative, nondescript, little ID Corvette T-shirt on. Okay. But he was well-dressed, well coiffed. Well I could tell this was a man of means. And I had a business uh, for 22 years here, and I've dealt with so many different people on the ladders of life. And I sheepishly said, oh, you, you like Corvettes? And he kind of says, yeah. Now, I knew the next question. Normally, I'll say, well, what car do you have? Well, I knew. I could just tell. <laughs> And I says, you know, I'm curious, how many Corvettes do you own? Okay. And he was caught off guard because he knew I knew. Yes. And he sheepish just, well, I've I've got several. And after we got talking, I got him to open up. A lot of these men are very quiet, and you have to start asking questions, especially with us as the hobbyist. And if you ask a guy, what car do you have? You better be ready for two hours of telling you all yeah, the details right. yeah. of the stats and what he's done and how long he's had it. So I learned how to get into those and shorten that up so I can get to some spiritual questions. Anyway, after we talked for a while, we had a bond and talking about some items and details of quarter cars. Now, he's he's an older guy, and he has way more knowledge than I would but I have some knowledge, so I can ask some questions or talk sure. about topics. It's it's a big, big hobby, the Corvette Nation. So anyway, I said, you know, I would really enjoy if you would allow me to make an appointment and come see your collection. Okay. He said, oh, sure. That'd be great. Long story short, this guy lives in North Scottsdale in a very wealthy area, uh, guard-gated, and when I got through there and I got up to his house, and I, I've been in these because with work I've I've dealt with some of these folks. And this was a huge uh, one part, two stories, the one part just big, long, one story. And so in this one section that has a basement, that's where he keeps his nine Corvettes. Oh, boy. And there's one from each C series. That's what we call them. So you have C1, okay. C2s, up to CAs. And he had one. And some of them were very special. I mean, million-dollar or multi-million-dollar cars. Well, I could tell this guy was into the details. In fact, there's a subgrouping called the uh, uh, Corvette uh, uh, Hobbyist uh, NCRS uh, Society. And they like to have cars that look original. Every nut, bolt, radiator, mm -hmm. hose, um, uh, grounding strap, uh, tires, rims, rear ends, everything's got to be like it came out of the factory. And you can do that with Corvettes. There's a lot of parts still available. Right. Well, come to find out after I re previewed and looked at all his vehicles, he gave me some backstories. He, they, when you do this special part of the hobby, you can take your Corvette in and a group will have a meeting and you can have it judged. And there's a book, a <laughs> manual that has all the nuts and bolts and bodies and colors and tops right. and everything. And you get a score. And of course, the most purest would be 100. Well, most guys get 80, 85. Well, he's got some that are like in the 90s. Wow. Come to find out. He writes the manuals. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, this guy was the creme de la creme. But after I have previewed, we talked a bit more, you know, I was interested, of course, to ask about his spirit. 
Right. So I was asking now, he was older from Chicago and he'd been in Arizona for about 25 years. And this is just one of several homes. And uh, I said, do you have a church you go to? And he kind of sheep and says, well, no, we, we don't attend anywhere. And I says, well, that's really sad. You know, you really, uh, I know a lot of Christian car guys, you, you ought to connect. And I'd sure encourage you to think about now. I know that he's older. I know he knows he's not going to be around much longer. And he sees yeah. a lot of his friends passing on as I do. And so I, I knew I didn't have a chance to go really deep, but I planted the seed. He listened. He heard. So I have faith that uh, the spirit will help him. And uh, I'm there if he needs me. But before we left, uh, at my church, uh, we do a, for a Wednesday night boys group. We have an event where we, I, I bring in Corvette models, plastic models, you know, and we build them and paint them and then right. have a, uh, have a contest on a <clears> Saturday. <throat> and I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you something, sir. I, I, I know you're well off and, and people are at you a lot, but I've got a little thing because you're a car guy that you might help with. I said, models have gone through the roof. Our church used to be able to buy these things without a problem, but with all this inflation, it's off the charts, and there's not as many models. So there's, it's, it's. I said, if there'd be a way that you might consider writing a small check and sending it to my church, that would help me defray the extra cost that it's going mm -hmm. to be to do this event. He stood there, and he kind of thought for a bit. He says, well, I'll think about it. But he says, wait a minute. I've got something for you. He walks away, and then he finally comes back. And in his arms, he's got three big boxes of some plastic models that evidently he had bought to help his grandkids You're back in kidding. the 80s. Wow. These were original unused kits. He says, here, I want you to have these. I says, oh, thank you. We could use this as some prizes and stuff like that. Yeah. So I get these things. Uh, I have people give me a t-shirt or I was at one outdoor event in Sun City West, uh, 400 cars there paid to be there and a uh, big vendor area. And I saw hundreds of people and a guy came up to me and we chatted and he pulls out of his pocket, a dog tag. He says, I want you to have this dog tag. I said, what is this? Well, I'm a chaplain over at the air base, and I occasionally have these to hand out, and I want you to have this. Now, he's a real chaplain. I mean, he's had schooling, and he's had right. to be in the Air Force. I'm not really a chaplain in that sense, but our organization, after we're trained, because we have to go through a lot of training and investigations and interviews, we're called with the title chaplain. So I tell people, just call me Chaplain Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Two minutes. Amen. Well, you know, uh, Chuck, it's it's really interesting to hear your stories. <clears throat> and one of the things that that I'm picking up on as as we chat is is your ministry is something you said early in our interview. It's planting the seed, and you you sometimes we. You know, as, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we feel like we we have to be a harvester. And 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 there are some of us who God uses to plant the seed and have the faith that the Holy Spirit is going to continue to work on that seed that Wonder. God gave us the opportunity to plant. And we don't have to worry about the results because that's not our job. Our job is to be obedient to what God has called us to do. And uh, I really love the you know, the stories that you've told. And, and I, I love your attitude uh, about planting seeds, just giving the, the Holy Spirit the opportunity to introduce people to the the critically important area of their lives, which is the spiritual area. And so I, I really appreciate uh, the fact that you have given witness to what that means in a practical sense. Chuck, we just have uh, uh, 30 seconds left. 
Do you have a quick word that you'd like to leave with our our listeners? Yeah, I I am shocked by how the Lord is blessing these little efforts that I give. Um, I'm equipped. I, I have some skills, and they've been developed uh, with jobs I've had. But those special spiritual gifts, and it might be just one, but sometimes people get more. I'm his servant. I'm there. I'm willing to talk to people even if I don't feel like it. But boy, he just brings the people, and it's such a blessing. I, I don't know how long he wants me to do this, but I'm here for the long haul. Amen. Amen. Chuck Kraken, McCracken, thank you so much for being with us today. And the Lord bless you and bless your opportunities to be Jesus' hands and feet.